Did you know that your brain has 100 billion neurons? And each of these neurons are capable of making up to 10,000 connections. That means your brain has the capability of 200 million billion calculations per second. That makes your brain one of the most complicated structures, complicated objects in the universe today. This brain of ours has a left side, and a right side. The left side is where language and communication processing takes place. This is where mathematical and logical reasoning take place. And this is where we give attention and see the details. The right side, on the other hand, is where emotional processing takes place. This is where we understand and experience emotions. This is where we look at the bigger picture, we are aware of space and spatial environments. This is where cognition takes place, and cognition is all about understanding, understanding the world within which we function. The right brain really sees the big picture, and really, maybe to explain it in a, in a much simpler way, the left brain sees the tree, and the right brain sees the forest. So, 200 million billion calculations per second, a left brain, a right brain. This brain of ours sits within a skull. And the way your brain makes sense of the environment and the world out there is through your senses. Through touch, through taste, through smell, through sight, and through what you hear, through sound. All of that information it's processed by the sensory brain, which acts as the control gate to how are you going to respond emotionally to something? Are you going to be happy? Or are you going to be really angry? Your actual reaction, are you going to fight? Or are you going to flight? All right. The stress levels are determined by the response through the senses. And also, what you pay attention to. Do you walk into a room? And you see how beautiful it is, you see the colors, you see the design. Or, do you walk into the room, you check where the exit is, you count the number of tables, and you're aware of the practical layout, but not necessarily take any notice of the color or the design or the ambiance. Phenomenal brain. All of this takes place in what we call the unconscious brain. This processing through the senses takes place through the unconscious brain that processes information at 11 million bits per second. The rational brain, that's the one that we use to think with, or think that we think with. The rational brain is the brain that we use to think about thinking. The rational brain is the part that we spend most of our time trying to develop and tap into with regards to decision making and trying to solve complex problems. The rational brain processes information at 40 bits per second. So, how do we tap into the 11 million bits per second? Do you think that's possible? Consider the typical spaces within which we spend most of our time trying to solve complex problems such as poverty, unemployment, the war for talent, how are we going to meet shareholder demand, how are we going to increase company growth, how are we going to become more innovative. Typically spaces that are highly structured, okay, rigid, we can't move objects around. Because we pay a lot of money per square meter, it's very important that it is efficient use of space, so there's limited space for movement. It's beautifully designed. I mean, you can see the rooms over there, and it's quite expensive, because it has to fit the company image and brand. We can't have a room that doesn't support the brand that we try to portray to the world out there. And often, these rooms also reinforces power structures and hierarchies. Yeah. We have our favorite seat, and the head of the table generally dominates the conversation. 
And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with these rooms, but I'm asking, how much of the capability of the brain are we able to tap into in rooms such as this, trying to solve complex problems? What if, what if we could consider a different kind of space? What? <laughs> Is creativity. What can I add? Eat the apple for the crop. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see the branches. have an input and a say, it's valued and for the right reasons. We will have multiple elements of information. There's going to be quite a lot of complexity there. And putting out the message internally and also externally. <laughs> opportunity to design a space and to try out all the things that I've always wanted to try out. As somebody who's spent most of a corporate career facilitating and training, I've probably seen the insight of more training rooms, meeting rooms, boardrooms and conference rooms than most of you. And when I was asked to come and design and build the Gibbs Innovation Lab, and Gibbs is a business school, uh, a very prominent business school in South Africa, and it's affiliated to the University of Pretoria, it was important for me to take all the lessons that I've learned over my career and incorporate it and make sure that the space does not, um, does not take away from thinking, but that the space adds to thinking. And the principles that I used in the design was, first of all, flexibility. Flexibility is important because I never know who's going to be in the room, what size it's going to be, what sort of groups are going to be there, and you need to be able to reorganize and change the space according to what the needs are and according to the requirements that, you, that you're trying to achieve, the objectives that you want to get out at the end of the day. The second thing, usability. How many times have you been in a room and you're not allowed to stick anything on a wall? There's no way to write, there's no way to draw, there's no way to engage with the space. So usability was a key factor in thinking about the design. And next guiding principle was give your brain a hand. The moment you give your brain a hand and you allow people to construct their thinking, you engage with all the senses. And apart from engaging with the senses, remember I'm starting to tap into 11 million bits of calculations per second now, I'm also able to create three-dimensional shared transactional spaces which allows for far better collaboration and co-creation and engagement. Playfulness and exploration was another guiding principle. I had a serious aha moment about five years ago. I consider myself pretty creative as an individual. And, you know, five years ago, I already had about seven years of a deep dive into creativity and what it means and innovation. But my aha moment came with the following. I gave myself explicit permission to be creative. It was this project that I was doing. But that changed the way I thought about stuff. 
explicit permission to be creative. And how does that link to playfulness? The more playful you are, the more creative you become. The moment a space is playful and it allows for play, that gives you permission to explore, to try new things, to make mistakes and to redo it. Because it's playful. And playfulness leads to a far better creativity. I wanted a space that, will, that we tap into and be conscious of senses. Why? Because we need to be focused about the human and sit, put the human in the middle of everything that we think of and that we design. And then lastly, very importantly, it needed to be a space where collaboration can take place. I was given two months, a budget, a classroom. Uh, the classroom was over, is over there, or was over there a reception area, and six offices. With limited budget and limited time, I could not re, you know, build the total space, so I had to work with existing structures. And what was important for me was to make sure that when the space was finished, when people walk in, that they don't get a sense of these are offices with a fresh coat of paint, but that it is an integrated space and that it's a, a different kind of space. This is Abraham the first shelf he ever built in his life. You can see he's very proud. That's the beginning of the story. And this is the first room. The first space is dedicated to sight. So each of the rooms are dedicated to one of the senses, and then we go from the, from the senses into a workshop area. And sight is all about how do we see things? How, how do we make a process or a product or a service more visible? How do we consider color and light in the way that we engage with what we design for our end consumers? Are we aware of people who might be sight impaired, who might be colorblind? How do we bring visibility into their worlds? The room is full of stimulus, full of pictures. It taps into imagination. It brings new thinking to the floor. Sound. Is it possible for us to use sound to change the way a customer or a consumer experience your product or your service, your offering? How often do you consider sound in the way that you design and think? How do we bring design or how do we bring sound into the way that we solve complex problems? Could that potentially lead down new neural pathways? Touch. Touch is the first sense that develops in the womb. It's the most ancient of our senses. Think about it. Your digital device, how do you engage with it? Through touch? It completely revolutionized the way we engage with digital devices. So imagine how can you bring touch into your thinking in ways that you've never considered before. How does it feel? How does your product feel? How does your service feel? How does your process feel? Taste. Does your service or your brand have a taste? Should it have a taste? Think about it. If you were owning a, a, a digital TV channel company and you had cooking channels on and your some of your customers, probably some of your most dedicated viewers, are glued in front of the, con the, the cooking channel every day. What if you bring into that package the ability for them to pre-order all the ingredients, have it delivered, and for them to participate in the cooking experience while watching the cooking channel? Do you think they'll swap to another TV channel provider if you give that to them? And then, of course, smell. Smell is the most powerful sense in, a way, in, a, in, in, in terms of memory forming and, 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 and creating memories. It sits right next to the hippocampus in the brain. And that's why smell has such incredible, powerful ways of reconnecting with memories. And um, we have to be aware of smell. We need to be conscious of how it would impact the customer experience. But we also need to consider how do we make something more memorable. And then play. I've already stressed the importance of play. 
but you can see a playful space. And that's Nelson over there. He did look at me funny when I said we need to paint the ceilings. And I think he would be very amused if he saw what happens in a playful space. But there's a lot of movement. As a result of the, the space, there's a lot of movement. And the more you move, the better your brain works. When you move, your brain moves for you. There's high levels of engagement. There's a, an enormous amount of laughter. The more we laugh, the more we engage. Laughter is the, the most uh, recognizable human emotion across every culture in the world. Even rats laugh, by the way. Do I need to say anything about that? And then in the workspace, this is where we take all the elements from all the rooms and people come into the space and we construct and we build and we create three-dimensional models to explore the thinking. And we explore complex problems. Don't think because this is a playful, fun space that the problems are less serious. As a matter of fact, they are more serious. And I want to show to you what engagement looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? We can change it, we can turn it around, but what if we do this? But maybe we should do that. It's a completely different level of thinking when you bring your hands into the space and where you construct your thinking because you can change your thinking along the way and prototype the solutions. So imagine, imagine what we could do if we could bring complex problems into spaces where we are able to tap into 200 million billion calculations per second, where we are able to tap into 11 million and 40 bits of information per second versus just 40 bits. I'm going to challenge you to rethink space and to think about space where you can invite whole mind, whole body, whole person thinking. Thank you.